Hey guys, it's Ropsy back with Paperless Student. In today's video, I'm going to be comparing Notability to GoodNotes 5, mostly focusing on their differences. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Don't forget to subscribe if you're looking for a solution to go paperless with your studies or your business. And if you're already subscribed, make sure you turn on your notifications so you know when I release a new video. A lot of you guys have been asking me to do study with me videos so you can get a feel of exactly what I do on a daily, weekly or monthly basis with my studies. And I'm pleased to let you know that I have launched a separate channel dedicated to that. Just for my workflows and my study sessions, I decided to separate that content from this channel's content because this channel mostly focuses on app reviews and comparing them. So if you're interested in my workflows, then make sure you subscribe to that channel called Paperless Student Studies after this video. Let's compare these two giants. Both applications have had massive updates in the last 12 months. GoodNotes had a very uneventful 2018, whereas we saw Notability dishing out updates throughout 2018. A lot of you guys kept asking me to do a comparison video, but I didn't think it was going to be a fair comparison without GoodNotes 5. So now that GoodNotes 5 is out, let's do this. On my screen, I have Notability on the right and GoodNotes to the left. In this video, I will be giving points to the application that does better with each feature. We'll see at the end of the video which application has more points. The first thing we'll look at is organization. Notability has a two hierarchy system for organizing your notes. You get a divider and a subject. A divider can have subjects in it and each subject then has individual notes. This is very limited organization. It works though, but if you want more control and more folders within your folders, you are better off with GoodNotes 5. For organizing your notes, I'd say GoodNotes 5 is better. You can get to see your favorite documents as well in GoodNotes 5, which is very useful. Um, and Notability doesn't have this option to mark your favorite documents. This point goes to GoodNotes 5 for a sophisticated organization system that makes sure you store your notes in exactly the subfolders you want them to be in. The more subfolders you can have within an application, the better the organization. The next thing we'll talk about is storage. Notability is a massive space saver. I have so many documents in Notability than I have in GoodNotes 5 and they are taking almost the same space. From the 372 documents that I have in Notability, I'm using about 900 megabytes and GoodNotes 5 with the same number of files will take up so much more space. I have four documents in the application and that is taking up to 667. This matters if you intend to keep all your work on your iPad for years. Then this is something to consider that Notability, generally speaking, will save space on your iPad, whereas GoodNotes will tend to use up more space. And bear in mind that the documents that I have in GoodNotes are actually not annotated. So if I did annotate those PDFs, the documents with the annotations would be so much more bigger. So for this feature, Notability wins. The third thing we'll talk about is security. Notability offers password protection they improved the security to include fingerprint and face ID unlocking options, which has made my life so much easier, so much more secure. And I love it. GoodNotes 5 doesn't have any password protection for your documents. For security, I add one point to Notability. Next, we'll talk about settings. GoodNotes 5 has more customization, but I was more interested in whether or not the customizations add value to the overall user experience. And there are a few customizations that actually do, like turning off the status bar that can give you more screen to work on and less distractions on your screen. You can change the position of your toolbar and choose the type of scrolling you want in your application. This option to open documents as new tabs is underrated. There are honestly times when I simply don't want to open a new document 
in a new tab and it's great that the application offers you the option to turn this option off. GoodNotes also offers the option to index your notes. Notability just does this without asking you for permission. However, if you turn this option off in GoodNotes 5, you can't search through your notes, which means indexing is actually a necessary part of the application's search algorithm. And it begs the question, why bother giving me the option to allow it in the first place? GoodNotes 5 gets a point for settings and user interface customization. iCloud syncing. Both apps have this. I have both applications on my iPad and on my iPhone. Notability syncs by the second. GoodNotes 5 tends to take a bit longer. And if you open the same notebook and made some changes, Notability picks it up immediately. Whereas GoodNotes has a delay. And so I would say for huge files or for a lot of files, GoodNotes will tend to be slower syncing across your devices than Notability. So for this one, I give Notability a point. The next thing we'll talk about is the theme. Notability has some themes which I keep telling myself I will buy, but um, actually I never do. Um, I guess I like how the classic themes look, but um, if you prefer to have some colors for your note-taking application, then Notability has that option. Hmm, I might actually purchase them after this video, actually. I'm not sure. Anyway, in GoodNotes 5, you can't change the color for your interface is fixed. So for presentation, Notability gets a point because the themes are beautiful. They have themes based on different months and they're cute. The next thing we'll talk about is importing documents. Notability can import documents into the application from five cloud services, which is decent. But compared to GoodNotes 5, which imports via the files manager, the files app, uh, you can import documents from other applications on your iPad, which means you don't need to leave the application to get documents you need, if you know where they are, of course. I'm not a huge fan of the Files app, but it does come in handy when you warm up to it. So GoodNotes 5 deserves a point for more variety when importing documents. Next, we will talk about Universal Search. Both applications search through your handwriting. Notability will search through your titles and your contents. And that is all they will show you. You then have to go through each and every page or each and every note to see what you're looking for. But GoodNotes will search through your documents and it will separate them and it will categorize them for you into written notes, titles, PDFs, document outlines, and type notes. And that is impressive. If you know what you're looking for, you can jump right to it. If you know you're looking for a textbook, for example, you can just look through titles. So this is really great. It's very amazing that the application organizes your search results. And that is a point for GoodNotes 5. If you haven't seen the review of these applications individually, I will put a link in the description down below. Make sure you watch those as well to appreciate the individual applications before making your purchase. So the next thing we'll talk about is creating documents. Creating documents in Notability is fast and painless. You don't even have to name your documents. One tap and you have a unique document that is created in the application. It will say note, and it'll give the date, the time and everything, which is great if you prefer to name your entries according to the date and time that they were created for easier finding later. This is certainly very useful for lecture notes and for class notes. If you can't remember where you put your lecture or what folder it's in or what subject, you can always go back to your diary and look up the time and date of the lecture notes or the class and you will find your notes. And this is very useful. In good notes though, I dislike the cover. Uh, that's not to say that it's a bad thing. I just don't have a taste for it. 
really. Every document you create is untitled, which means that it's necessary for you to name your documents. Otherwise, the application will just have untitled notebook one, untitled notebook two, three, etc. And so when creating a notebook in Goodnotes 5, it's really a three-step system. They did make up for that by adding the quick note option, which is essentially what Notability does, except that your quick note is also untitled and therefore not unique at all. And so for the ease of creation for documents, especially if you are in a hurry, I find Notability very useful. One point to Notability. Exporting documents. I like the page margin that Notability adds to your documents. It gives more room for extra notes or corrections should they be need for them in the future. And that is great in my opinion. But that margin only works with native Notability paper. So it has its limitations. GoodNotes 5 allows you to export editable PDF annotations, meaning someone can actually erase your highlights and comments from your PDFs if if you allowed them to by, you know, sending them an editable PDF versus sending a flattened PDF. Uh, a flattened PDF means no one can revert the annotations. And GoodNotes also exports images, which is useful. I'm giving this point to GoodNotes 5. Next, we have the text tool. Notability has improved their text tool. You can add bullet points. You have numbering systems. And you can't do this in GoodNotes. Of course, you can do it manually, but um, the application doesn't actually support it. You can also have some favorite templates, um, three of them to be precise in Notability. And GoodNotes doesn't have templates that you can save, but it allows you to add a background color. It also allows you to add uh, a border around your text, some padding, all which you can achieve in Notability in one way or the other. Um, I guess this one goes to Notability. The tasks that you can create in Notability, once you're done, if you tap it, it will scratch it out and it looks beautiful. It looks sophisticated. I love it. So I'm definitely going to give this one to Notability. The next thing we'll talk about is the pen tool. Notability offers you two types of pens, a bowl pen and a fountain pen. The sizes are fixed, but they're functional and they're a very wide variety. GoodNotes 5 gives you three pens, the fountain pen, bowl pen, and a brush pen. And the sizes are more customizable, ranging from 0 millimeters to 2 millimeters. While this is great, I personally find Notability's writing experience superior, but this really depends on personal preference. The thing about the, the pen tool is that Either it works for you or it doesn't. I did a comparison video for the pens and writing experience. Make sure you check out that video to understand how I feel about the writing experiences in the different applications. But for this feature, I always pick Notability, but I'm not going to give any points because this is really dependent on preference. It just either works for you or it doesn't. I could just give points to both of them, but you know, let's just not give any points. How's that? The next tool we'll talk about is the highlighting tool. No questions here. Notability has the superior one. It makes your highlights pop out versus Notabilities, which dims the section that you have highlighted. Notability really needs to work on this one. <sighs> yeah, it, it, it puts me off. Honestly, I use Notability all the time, but I never highlight anything. Actually, I highlight my notes in a separate application, PDF Expo to be precise. So it really can be a determining factor whether or not someone will get Notability. So this is really a must fix feature. And for this one, one point goes to GoodNotes 5. Next, we have the eraser. And once again, GoodNotes 5 shines with its improved eraser that can not only erase per pixel and per stroke depending on how you set it up the eraser now can also erase just the highlighter selectively even when you've got something written on the page you can actually set your eraser in goodnotes 5 to erase just the highlight a round of applause to goodnotes 5 in notability the eraser is very simple it erases per stroke and it doesn't selectively erase highlights so yeah that's very sad but um i use it all the time I'm used to it, but more options, always better. For this one, GoodNotes gets the point. Next, we have the lasso tool. And again, GoodNotes continues 
to shine. GoodNotes can allow you to take a screenshot of a selection, which is neat. And GoodNotes 5 also allows you to rotate your handwriting now. You could get over that limitation by simply writing something on the page at an angle. But like I said, I like options. This rotation function shines with diagrams and with images that you put into the application. The only thing you find in Notability that is missing in GoodNotes 5 is the ability to change the thickness of your pen on the selected section. This one I actually use very often, actually. I'm sure a lot of people find the lasso tool options in GoodNotes 5 very useful and they do have more options. So I think they deserve a point for this one. Next, we will talk about the audio recording tool. Rumor has it that GoodNotes 5 is working on adding this to their tools. At the moment, they don't have this fantastic feature. For this feature alone, I could give Notability 5 points because it is an amazing feature, but I won't. The ability to sync your notes to an audio recording is by far the coolest and most useful feature I have seen in any note-taking application. Excellent work, Notability. The team does a marvelous job, so much that the audio files don't even take up space or storage on your iPad, which is awesome. A lot of people always ask me, do the audio recordings take up space? Are they huge files? And the answer is no, they're actually not huge files at all. It's almost as if they are non-existent. So for this, Notability is obviously the winner. A point for Notability. Then let's talk about things you can add to your notes. Notability can allow you to add GIFs, figures, web clips, and sticky notes. Sticky notes can also be added in GoodNotes. It's just that the application doesn't support them in their options, but um, there is a way for you to add your own sticky notes in GoodNotes. So one point goes to Notability. This Shapes tool, Notability recently updated their Shapes tool and now it supports circles, but it doesn't support oval shapes. So if your circle is a little bit wide, and it's not a perfectly symmetrical circle, chances are Notability will not recognize it, which is something they're probably still working on. Essentially, the circle tool is available now, so maybe we could actually start considering using Notability for all those subjects that have a lot of diagrams and a lot of shapes in them, because I've always recommended you use GoodNotes for that. You might actually be happy using Notability. However, GoodNotes 5 has autofill for its shapes now, so unfortunately, Notability Shapes tool is still lagging behind. So for this one, despite the fact that I find it annoying to keep on selecting the Shapes tool every single time, I think Notability has a better approach to the Shapes tool where you draw a line, draw a straight line, long press, and it will straighten it out. I like that approach. It works better for me. But um, the people that use good notes are not complaining about that, um, having to tap the shapes tool and with the new added autofill option the tool is even better than the one in notability and so we will say one point to goodnotes 5 and next we will talk about pictures goodnotes 5 supports png photos and these are the photos without a background and those are great i miss them in notability notability used to have them and then one day they were gone bring back that feature please not having it is really making my life miserable i hate the plain background that notability puts on all my pictures now it is very annoying and notability only allows you to crop your images as distinct shapes as a square or as a rectangle and that's very limiting because goodnotes 5 offers you freehand cropping which i'll personally take any day and goodnotes 5 allows you to rotate your images as well for you know more snazzy looking notes one point to goodnotes 5 paper customization the one thing that kills notability I could give GoodNotes 5 5 points for this one, but I won't. You can't move multiple pages in Notability. You can't change the paper template for one page in Notability. 
it changes the whole document. Not to talk about the lack of rotation for the pages in the application. It's unbelievable. I have to manually turn my iPad to write notes in landscape in notability. And that just makes me mad. I mean, look at this. Good notes has it all. You can move multiple pages. You can change templates for one page. In fact, in GoodNotes 5, each and every individual page on your document can be different from the next. It can be a different template. It can be a different size. It can be a different orientation. And if you're not happy with the orientation you've chosen, you can rotate the pages in GoodNotes 5. I'm really tempted to give GoodNotes 5 5 points, but I'm just going to give one point to GoodNotes 5 for page customization. This is the one thing that makes GoodNotes 5 a superior application to Notability. The page customization in Notability is terrible. Terrible is an understatement. It is horrendous. Scrolling within the application. Notability has one continuous vertical scrolling system and I love it. Your handwriting can even overlap onto pages and me loves. However, I wouldn't advise it if you're going to be exporting your notes as PDFs to other applications because then it breaks your continuous line of thought. And that's always a bit distracting. And it doesn't look pretty in other applications, especially if you add the margin around. It just looks ridiculous. GoodNotes 5 supports both vertical and horizontal. The vertical scrolling in GoodNotes 5 is not very smooth. At least it's not as smooth as the one in Notability, but it works. And for once, more options doesn't necessarily mean better. I'm giving this one to Notability. Then we have the split view feature, which was the most pleasant surprise update I got last year from Notability. You can split view within the application. And Notability so far is the only note-taking application that I know that does this. GoodNotes 5 has multiple tabs, but I think the split view is better. It has its limitations, but it works better. I, mean, I don't know a lot of people that would be working with three or four documents all at once in the same application. I really love the split view in Notability. So I'll say one point to Notability. With 10 to 11 in favor of GoodNotes, you can hardly say that one application outshines the other. Of course, some features like automatic backup are still missing in GoodNotes 5, but um, the team is working on that because they did have that in GoodNotes 4. So I think it's just a matter of time before that shows up. That's why I didn't want to talk about it or mention it. Would you guys like to see a video about the features that I'd like to see added to GoodNotes 5 like I did for Notability? Let me know in the comment section down below. Let me know what you guys think about this comparison. Did I miss out anything? I'm interested to know what you guys think. And let me know if you're interested in seeing GoodNotes 5 versus Notability for PDF annotation because that is a question I get often um, and I thought maybe that deserves a separate video. So give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Let me know what you guys think about Notability and GoodNotes 5. Don't forget to check out my new channel, Paperless Student Studies, if you want to understand my daily workflows. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.